Hi, uh, my name is CJ Salapare. I'm a senior studying art history at Williams, um, and I'm coming to you live from Long Beach, California. Um, I'm here to briefly introduce our series of interviews with the WICMA staff, um, through which we're doing through the Agents for Creative Action program. So the program consists of various students from all different backgrounds who come together weekly at the museum to learn more about museum practice generally. Um, and so one critical component of what we did uh, back at Williams was getting to meet staff members and to hear about the work that they're doing. But obviously that's something that we can't do given the current circumstances. But, and with that in mind, we thought that these interviews would be a great way to remain connected to the museum and to hear about what these uh, museum professionals are doing, um, both in their homes and in their work. So um, we have here today Lisa Doran, who's absolutely awesome. Um, and uh, I like to speak briefly about what, like why I decided or why I wanted to interview her. Um, I think that her curatorial practice has been really, really fascinating, especially in the context of a college museum. Um, so many of the exhibitions that I've been um, um, able to see during my time at Williams have always pushed the boundaries, whether it be in terms of what the object consists of, uh, what we can do with it, and who um, constitutes it. Um, and so I'm, I'm really excited to be able to probe those questions a little bit further with her. Um, and with that being said, I'd like to introduce my co-host, Vicky, and then allow her to, um, and then allow Lisa to introduce herself as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm Victoria. My majors are economics and statistics, and I'm a current junior. Um, I am coming to you from San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and I think Lisa was, our first interaction, I believe, was with the acquiring art class that I took. And it was so cool to just hear her opinions and um, echoing what CJ was saying, it'd be great to delve more into her curatorial practice. So Lisa, do you mind introducing um, your position at Williams and your current location. Sure. So, well, thank you for inviting me to chat with you today. It's great to see you both. Um, I, uh, I, my name is Lisa Doran. I'm the Deputy Director for Curatorial Affairs at WICMA, and I've been uh, in that position for about seven years. And um, I'm also a graduate of the Williams College Graduate Program in Art History. Um, and I worked at, at WICMA in an earlier phase in my career. So I have a long connection um, and deep connection to, um, to the college and to the museum. Um, so I feel very privileged to have been able to um, do so much of my professional work in this, uh, in this environment. Um, and where I am right now is in my bedroom in Williamstown. Great. And, and, and we're all missing you here in Williamstown. <laughs> we miss you guys too. Um, so just to get started, um, do you mind sharing a little bit more about specifically the work you do and then like maybe a day to day and why it inspires you? Yeah, of course. So, so my role as Deputy Director for Curatorial Affairs has multiple facets. And so, um, so one, of the, one of my roles is as a member of the senior leadership team. So I'm working really closely with Pam Franks, our director, and my colleagues um, who are all um, running different um, teams throughout the museum. So colleagues in, um, in finance and operations and development in communications and engagement in exhibitions and collections management. And so together as a team where we're uh, working to um, to facilitate the, the, the mission of the college, uh, of, of the college museum and thinking through, you know, what, what our role is and, and working to also support our, our teams and the members of our teams and advocate for them within the scope of the larger institution. Um, so that's one of the roles. Um, and then as the deputy director for curatorial affairs, I'm working really closely with the curators, right? Like, so we have our, our own kind of team and we meet together regularly and we, um, we strategize and talk about the kinds of exhibitions that we wanna be doing. We talk about the, um, the ways that we want to address 
the, the, um, the installation of the collection. Um, over time, we're thinking a lot about making big changes in that realm um, going forward. So we're really um, thinking about those things actively right now. Um, and we think about the kinds of work that we want to bring into the collection. So thinking about acquisitions as well as exhibitions and, and collection installations. Um, so we're, we're constantly thinking about how we're you know, researching the collection, interpreting the collection. And we do that together with our colleagues in engagement and interpretation. We work closely with Nina, with Christina, with others to think about how we're conveying the, um, the knowledge that we're producing around the collection, but also how we're, you know, engaging with our publics to help produce that knowledge together with us. Um, and that, that includes you all, but it also includes, um, you know, other students, other classes, and other visitors to the museum, um, and colleagues beyond the museum and beyond Williamstown, you know, thinking about how we can enliven and enrich the, um, you know, in, in, enrich our own um, understanding of the works that we have in the collection. So that's those those two. And then as curator for contemporary art, I am also working um, actively with living artists, uh, mostly, um, and, um, you know, bringing them to campus, um, thinking through our collection and our environment through the lens of, of an artist. Um, who is who has their own practice and their own you know engagement in the world and so those you know all three of those roles work together um in kind of in concert and in parallel and intersect with each other um, but what's inspiring about um all of them is that in in all of those um roles i work deeply collaboratively right so i'm i'm someone who really enjoys and thrives in working together with other people and um, and thinking about um, ideas together and developing ideas together. Um, what One thing I didn't mention too is that many of the projects that I work on now also are in collaboration with faculty. Um, so I've done a number of projects over the course of the last seven years that where they were kind of co-curated with, um, with faculty members. And that, again, is a way that uh, I really love working because they're bringing um, content expertise that I don't have. Um, and I'm hopefully, you know, bringing um, exhibition making expertise that they don't have that we can work together and develop something new that neither of us would make uh, on our own. And speaking to the inspiration that you get from collaboration and the creativity that comes from that, how have your sources of inspiration changed given the current circumstances? Um, like how has the recent kind of pandemic thrust some of your priorities into, um, I guess, into a critical space, into a critical space of reformulation? Um, has it kind of like born new sources of creativity? Um, I'm really curious to know. Uh, that's a good question. I think I'm still processing that. I think um, I think many of us maybe are um, still trying to understand what this moment it means <laughs> to each of us in so many ways. Um, I feel like every day I have a different kind of reaction to uh, to it, and it seems to mean different things. But um, I, I'll try to hold heart some of them in this moment. I mean, there are some very practical ways, obviously. Um, you know, when you're working really collaboratively and then you don't have access to the actual other humans um, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a daily way, um, that totally changes how you work. But we, you know, are all finding workarounds for that. And, um, you know, that obviously it's, it's very screen-based at the moment, but, um, but it's also allowed for a, a different kind of intimacy with, my colleagues that um, that maybe I wouldn't have expected, but that you know sometimes you are just picking up the phone and you're having more in depth and and intimate conversations. We're all getting to know each other's physical spaces in ways that you know wasn't the case before, or you know things that you know we're getting to know each other's kids and pets and all of those kinds of things that are happening um, in those spaces. And so that all, in some way, I think can only lead to deeper um, and more meaningful 
relationships and collaborations with the people that we're working with most closely. Um, because at the office, there's a kind of, you know, there's a limit, you know, you go to a meeting, you leave the meeting, you, you know, you do, you go about your business. Um, and there maybe aren't as many opportunities opportunities to um to have deeper exchange and i think we're finding in some ways that that's happening now more than ever so um so i'm hoping there are ways to preserve that aspect um in some way that we can continue that um deep exchange um the some of the really basic practical ways you know i mean we are so lucky at williams that we are all still having our jobs. <laughs> we are so lucky that we have not had to so far cancel any of our major upcoming projects. We have to have, we've shifted things around on the schedule. We've, you know, um, you know, prolonged certain things and shortened certain things. And, you know, we've, we've made changes to, um, to accommodate uh, the, the shutdown and this crisis, but we haven't so far had to really, um, lose anything um, but within that we're you know we do have to tighten a little bit we have to think really carefully about how we're using our resources and that's going to be the case for a long time I think and that's going to be the case for a lot of institutions um, but what the opportunity is in that is there's you know opportunity for creativity when you have to um, when you have to tighten, you have to kind of think about what's really uh, at the core of what you're trying to do and what's the true essence of what you're trying to do and kind of choose very carefully. Um, since you don't have all the options, you have only a few options, which ones are you going to pick? Um, so one of the things that's been really um, clear is that we have a tremendous advantage in thinking about what the collection can provide for us. You know, when you are scaling down a little bit, you may not be doing as many big loan exhibitions. You know, you may have to limit the numbers of, of exhibitions like that that you're doing for, for financial reasons. But that provides a tremendous opportunity, especially for us, because we're fortunate to have this great collection that we have to think creative ways, uh, think about creative ways to, to bring the collection forward and to kind of think you know, pose different kinds of questions of it and um, and present it in different um, ways. And so that is something that the curatorial team is really engaged in right now. And we're excited to be able to keep thinking that through. So I don't know if that's answered all your questions, but there are, that's a, it's a few, it's a few thoughts that I have immediately, but we might circle back to some of the, that later too. That sounded great. Um, and just continuing on the curatorial practice, um, I'm really curious about your process in general. And do you mind sharing kind of the gist of really what goes on inside of you when you choose to follow or pursue an artist? Like, what are, I don't know if there are patterns or characteristics that you're looking for, but um, in any context, if you could share that. Sure. Um it's yeah it's something i've thought about a lot because it's something you know, it's not something i can i've generally been able to i've never been terribly satisfied with my own description of how it works um it's definitely not an exact science um it's it's very subjective and um and it it just comes from you know um you know, it comes from doing it and taking chances and tr and trying things and seeing what works and seeing what doesn't. And um, but what I will say, it seems to be the most consistent in the in in the artists that I've chosen to work with and been and been privileged um, and fortunate to be able to work with. Um, they, I think, to a one, they've, they've all been really extraordinary human beings, like really wonderful people to to work with. And I, I'd like to say that's a criteria that I have because it certainly makes working with them delightful. Um, but I, you know, I don't. You don't always have control over that when you start talking to an artist about a project. You don't necessarily know how it's going to, you know, where it's going to end up. But I've just been very, very lucky that the artists that I've gotten to work with have also been really um, thoughtful and um, and wonderful people that I enjoy deeply being around. Um, but it always starts with the art first. So, I, you know, I see the work and usually it, there's something about it that um, 
maybe even you know bothers me or or that I'm struggling with or that is a little disturbing or a little hard to parse or I don't understand exactly what I'm looking at yet um, but there's something about it that just grabs me and takes takes hold um, it's not a thing that I can um, can quantify exactly but it, it's something that just uh, pretty consistently when uh, you know my best most interesting process um, projects have come out of something where I've been I've like come away from my experience with the art kind of scratching my head but it won't let go you know so I leave and I go about my business I do other things and it could take it could take days months years before I have I circle back to it um, and actually do a project but it's just it's always been there and it always holds on tight and um, and it, it makes me want to know more about it and so when that happens and I I know I have to take it you know take it seriously and I um, will often start a conversation with an artist generally really open-ended like hey um, you know this is where I work. Do you want to come visit? Do you want to come check it out? Do you want to see what this place is about and, you know, what might be possible? I generally don't have a very um, specific agenda about what I'm hoping will happen um, because I tend to, when I get to that stage, it's like I'm starting to, I trust the artists. They make the work and my job is to facilitate that making and to make a platform for it and to connect it to the context in which uh, it will happen. So I want to leave a lot of it very open for them to, um, to drive what they want to say, how they want to say it. And what I can do is say, okay, but these are the resources here. And that's not just financial, that's the students, that's the faculty, that's my um, colleagues in the museum. These are the things that we know how to do and we can do these are the kinds of people who come to visit the museum these are the kinds of people who pay attention to what we do at the museum even when they don't come um, you know these are the kinds of um, you know opportunities of being you know in a really small place right like an intimate environment with a lot of intellectual activity going on you know what are the kinds of questions you've been wanting to ask that you've never maybe had the opportunity to ask before because it hasn't been presented to you or you haven't had the opportunity to do something maybe you know i don't know i i see our our intimacy as um as a value um, and our remoteness, and uh, frankly, you know, the fact that we're kind of tucked away, we're not in the middle of New York City, like you can make a gesture here that you might not make, um, you know, at Art Basel or something, you might do something different in this context. And so that's usually the kind, the way I start the conversation and try to get artists to think about, you know, what this environment can, can offer. Um, and then, and, and, and it's collaborative. But like I said, I, I have a tremendous amount of faith in the artists that I work with. And I, I generally um, do everything I can to support sort of what they are envisioning um, with the deep knowledge that I have of the institution and what's, what, what we can do well, you know, and I'm, I will steer an artist away from something that I know that we can't support because we don't for whatever reason have some kind of that capacity um but i'll for the most part we'll just try to make whatever it is work within the scope of what we can do awesome cj do you want to ask your follow-up sure sure um i guess these are a bit more speculative um so bear with me uh the first i think um picks up uh, off of that sensation of artists having a hold on you in a way that you can't explain. Um, and I was wondering if that hold or that kind of feeling of being in an artist's thrall ever resolves itself? You know, does it resolve itself, I, I'm assuming, in the culmination of an exhibition? Or is there something that you're still kind of like searching for time and time again in the artists that you work with? Um, that's a really good question. I mean, I would say, um, 
you know, most of the artists that I've worked with, I still, they continue to surprise me, right? Like, so we've done a project and maybe we've even done something like a big survey show, you know, kind of mid-career type survey or something. And, um, and you know, in a way I could be like, oh, okay, I'm done, you know, mm -hmm. but that doesn't really happen. Like I continue to want to go see their exhibitions. I continue to want to stay in touch and see what they are doing. Um, you know, I, uh, we, uh, we've acquired a number of works um, for Wickma's collection of artists that I've worked with in the past um, because they continue to make work that just feels really relevant and feels like it's speaking to, um, you know, to, to, to issues that are, um, you know, that continue to be meaningful um, in e even as I move context and as I change in my own um, career and, you know, get older and see the world in different ways. And, um, but so do the artists, right? Like they're changing and growing and, um, and, uh, and shifting their own visions um, uh, as they move along. And that, you know, I think it, you know, the best artists, right? Like they, they continue to surprise us um, and continue to ask questions in a way that, you know, um, maybe the rest of us, uh, you know, don't. And, and that's, that's what, that's what keeps me, keeps me going. So I, um, yeah, so I find that um, I, I don't think it ever gets resolved. Like I, you know, I think that when I think back on projects that I've done, I think, oh, we could easily do, you know, two or three shows, different shows, and they would be completely different, you know, that like there's enough, um, there's enough there that that, um, that that would be possible. Um, but, you know, it generally, you don't always have, you don't generally have the opportunity <laughs> for that. Um, I mean, one of the, uh, one of the projects that I, um, that I really value and I think a lot about because I had the, the opportunity to open a project at the Art Institute of Chicago where I was working before I came here um, and then bring that same artist and the and more or less the same show here to, to Williams. And it was a really interesting conversation and shift because the, the artist who was based in Berlin, her name was Monica Baer, she had didn't really know what Williams was. She'd never heard of it. It was something that was, you know, it was kind of like, what is this, you know, college museum? I don't even know what a college museum is. It's not really a thing they have in in Europe in the same way. Like she just was confused. Um, and so I just said, come here, like come here and see it, um, understand what we have, meet, you know, my colleagues and meet a bunch of faculty and think about the kinds of questions that we're asking here. And she's a painter, um, but we put her together with like people from theater and people from political, political science and people from history. And we just had dinner and we just talked about ideas. And she really became, she started to have these kind of light bulbs, you know, thinking about classes coming to see her show and what kinds of questions they might be asking, what kinds of questions the students might be asking from their different disciplinary perspectives. And even though she's very much a painter who makes paintings about painting, <laughs> she was really open to that and it really got her very excited. Um, and to the extent that she was even like, oh, well, what are they gonna do at the Art Institute? And I said, well, they're gonna open the doors and people are gonna come. Um, but they're not necessarily, that's it. Like there's not going to be this kind of engagement over the course of the time that it's up. Like that's what we do and here. And that's, you know, um, something that for the, for many artists, this is not a way they've thought about their work mm -hmm. before, right? It lives in the art world, you know, and it doesn't necessarily have this other kind of engagement. Um, and we did something really special and we opened the, galleries up to students and classes during the installation mm -hmm. for a half an hour every day. It was tremendously challenging. It drove her crazy um, to have to stop everything. Um, and, and yet when all was said and done, she had the most fond memories of her time here and the questions that she got from the students. And it really did change how she was thinking about what she was making and what she was doing in profound ways that she did not expect. And so that for me is really exemplifies what I think 
is possible here and the kinds of and the ways that I like to work. And if I can create that moment both for the students and for the artists themselves, and there's a rich exchange between them, then I've done um, you know, my best work, right? It doesn't always work out that way exactly. Um, but that's the beauty of it too, is figuring out what does work, you know, in each instance and what, you know, what makes each artist tick, what makes, you know, what are the classes that are going to kind of find this, you know, work most relevant to the questions that they're asking. Um, and, you know, but that, and that, that's the fun of it is, you know, kind of trying to fit those puzzle pieces together. Um, so following up to the artist then, um, have you ever felt like you missed out on an artist or like didn't do enough research, um, which I'm sure happens very rarely, but I guess if there was any kind of similar feeling to that, if you could elaborate on that experience. When you say missed out on an artist, like kind of like just didn't get to work with them yeah um, or yeah. i mean including their works um mm -hmm. i guess in any form really yeah i mean uh, yeah i'm sure it happens it happens all the time in the sense that you know i can only do so many shows and <laughs> um and so mo i missed out on most artists right because <laughs> i've only done i've only done the number of shows that i've done um but i don't I don't tend to think about it that way. I tend to, um, uh, I tend to figure that, um, you know, if somebody else got to do it, you know, and did a, did a really good job, you know, then that's, that's all that matters. You know, at the end of the day, what matters is that the artist's work gets out there, that we all have the opportunity to see it and that we can kind of engage with it. Um, and you know so i i tend to focus more on on that than oh i wish i had done that show or whatever but um but i i mean let me think about it like so one of one of the first exhibitions that i mean sorry one of the first acquisitions that i made when i was when i came here was a piece by um the artist hannah wilkie and um at that time there and I guess still hasn't been, but I, I, I think there is a project in the works. But at, at, around that time, I got in touch, I was in touch with a colleague at the Berkeley Art Museum and, and we started thinking about whether, what, we were thinking about doing an exhibition, um, kind of co-organizing an exhibition of her work because there really hadn't been a major project. Um, for a variety of reasons that fell through, I think that um, there were maybe other there may be other institutions in the wings that uh, maybe bigger ones um, that wanted to do something in, in a little different way than we could have done. Um, but so that that's one instance when it was, you know, kind of a disappointment, like we had, you know, started the process and, and then couldn't complete it. But for the most part, I, I feel really, I feel really lucky. I've I gotten to work with the artists that I've gotten to work with them. Um, I don't feel like, I don't feel like anything's really. really. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I, I guess the only regret is that, yeah, is that there's only so much time and there's only so many projects and yeah, they're probably, I wish I could do more. I wish I could, you know, offer more opportunities, but I'm only one person. So it tends to, you know, you have to pick and choose. Sorry, could this be like off the record? Do we have time for one more question or should we cut it here? I, I mean, I, I have time, I'm, I'm fine either okay, way. Okay, okay. Um, I guess, hmm, I don't know which question to ask, but I, I think um, it, it's really interesting that you are working with in this kind of liminal space on the cusp be between the contemporary moment um, in terms of the artists that you're working with, but also in terms of an institution's history through its collections, which are both comprise, you know, which comprise art from a whole historical geogra and geographical spectrum. How do you balance those priorities, you know, and I'm how, as a curator, how does, um, 
I, like, how do you balance the historical and the contemporary, to put it broadly? Um, well, that's a really good question, because I've, I've only ever worked in institutions that have, um, you know, full kind of more encyclopedic types collections, right? I've never worked, uh, other than as a graduate student intern at Mass MoCA, um, I, I never really worked in an institution institution that didn't have a collection and didn't have a broad collection from all over the 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 world and all through time so um so i have pretty consistently thought about contemporary art within a context within a continuum and within um a, a kind of conversation with the broader uh sweep of of art histories and um that that's always been really um, exciting and interesting to me. And I think offers the artists a really um, rich environment in which to, um, to do what they do. I, I think because contemporary art is not, it, it can't be in a vacuum. I mean, it often, we often see it that way in these kind of like pristine white box galleries in, you know, um, that don't seem, they seem disconnected from the world, but that's not really true, um, obviously. And um, so I like that there are these kinds of opportunities for them to, to kind of mash together and come together. I think that, you know, like, the, the Michael Rockowitz project, for instance, I, obviously that was a very um, specific um, opportunity to um, have his work de like directly in conversation with objects from our collection and from a particular moment in time. Um, I don't tend to work that way all, all that often. And usually it's more, like I said before, it's open for the artists to kind of come in and um, you respond as they will to what we have but um but that in that particular instance um it really it's it seemed important to me because his um approach to that material was seemed so um critical to you know to bring to the fore in light of the com you know collection that we have and in light of the kind of conversations that we want to have about it um in ways that we want to interpret it that in that instance it made a lot of sense to kind of you know, be very directed in that. Um, but I did leave it very open. I was kind of like, you can come and respond and do anything you want, truly. Um, and we have these Assyrian reliefs and you have this project about Assyrian reliefs. So if, if it makes sense to do that, let's do that. Like if, it, if you want to do something different, I'm open to that too. So I did leave it open, but it, luckily he was interested in doing that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, I, I just think that, uh, you know, people like to say, and it's true, you know, all art was contemporary at some point, right? So everything mm -hmm. ha uh, that ha is in the collection and many things that are in the collection were made with, you know, within the scope of time in which they, you know, were brought into the collection in the scope of time in which they were made, you know, and I think, um, you know, I think it's helpful to, con to remember that and to remember that what artists are doing now is not all that different from what artists did before. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. it looks a little different or the questions might be different, but they're still um, creating something in response to the world in which they're living. And, um, and that, you know, that has, a, that conversation has a place, um, you know, in an institution and especially in an institution like ours where it, it, where it is, kind of small and those conversations can happen in this very intimate setting. Um, that feels, that feels right to me. Wow. Yeah, no, that's a, a very kind of like holistic approach toward um, balancing those two poles. Um, I think that this is all the time we have for questions. So we just like to thank you for offering your time and for providing us with such thoughtful responses to our questions. You know, this was a really illuminating conversation. Yeah, thank you so much, Lisa. Well, thank you for your very thoughtful questions. And, um, and I'm, I'm happy to chat with you anytime. This was, it was really fun. <laughs>